So some yes. portion of the 8 million views got ads, the money went to Warner Chapel, and Warner Chapel isn't the composer, isn't the copyright holder, and their only argument is that this was a derivative work that was not authorized to be monetized. So then what's going on with the Star Wars Vader debacle thing? Right, there's a, uh, a video, and we can sort of bring it out. It's called Shards of the Past. Vader, Episode 1, Shards of the Past. Let's bring it up here on, um, on Firefox. Yes, I know I can join their, their YouTube subscription. And supposedly they got a copyright claim to monetization from Warner Chapel on what I think is this section. Somebody point out to me if I'm at the wrong section, but about three minutes and 11 seconds in here, it goes like this. Now, if you've if you're listening to the music in the background, let me play it a little bit uh, again here. So the music has that sort of angelic, minor key, ghosty sound to it, right? Well, that, that apparently is what got claimed by Warner Chapel as being too similar to the Imperial March and the underlying John Williams compositions. You know how this works. Uh, John Williams will write a theme and then they will then write sub themes, uh, you know, background themes to go with that. And you'll hear various incantations of the Imperial March uh, in different uh, scales, you know, Ionian, Dorian, Mixolydian, that's the different musical scales. Um, and, and it's part of a different theme, you know, so it'll be a you know, more or less more positive or less positive or or dissonant version of said theme as you go through the the movie, the production and, you know, building in certain places, relaxing in certain places, climaxing towards, you know, the two thirds or end of the movie or whatever. Um, so Vader shards of the past is a Star Wars theory production. Well, Derivative work. Move on. Next story, right? Who cares? Well, if no, 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 it's more complex than that. It's actually really interesting. Supposedly, Star Wars Theory got permission from Lucasfilm to make a derivative work based on Star Wars. This is how it's supposed to be done, right? We want you to go get permission. We want you to clear your copyrights. So what's the problem? Well, Star Wars Theory invested some five-digit sum of money. Uh, I haven't been able to figure out the exact sum, probably 500, or excuse me, probably 50 to $100,000 to produce this 16-minute short about Darth Vader. And they were told that they could not monetize the video ahead of time. And they were not allowed, I guess not allowed to use the actual Star Wars theme, John, the John Williams theme. So they hired a composer to write a similar but not substantially similar theme, which I, if I'm understanding correctly, you just heard. And that's what got claimed by Warner Chapel. Now this video has 8 million views. So Warner Chapel got some cut of the money from 8 million views for a composition they didn't write and they don't have a fair use to. They don't have a fair use argument that they're... Wait, what money? I thought you said he wasn't allowed to monetize it. Right. Right. So that's what makes this a really weird situation, doesn't it? They didn't... Uh, Star Wars Theory wasn't allowed to monetize it, but how this works on YouTube is that Warner Chapel allegedly came along and manually claimed monetization, which starts monetization and the money goes to Warner Chapel. Uh, so some portion yes. of the 8 million views got ads, 
the money went to Warner Chapel, and Warner Chapel isn't the composer, isn't the copyright holder, and their only argument is that this was a derivative work that was not authorized to be monetized, but otherwise authorized. So there's two sides to this. If, if the composition, if the music composition is all that was being claimed, then I say if that music composition is not a derivative work, but rather an original composition that is not substantially similar or is somehow transformative and is a fair use, then I say that money is still Star Wars theories. I say that Warner Chapel is unjustly enriched, has oh. basically stolen that money, and even though it should never have been monetized in the first place, they did make money off of it, and so that money should, re should be returned. Advertisements were run without Star Wars Theory's permission, and that money belongs to Star Wars Theory, even though they, weren't, they didn't ever intended to make money off of it in the first place. Oh well, along comes Warner Chapel and turns on monetization against Star Wars Theory's will, and on a copyright they do not own. Yeah, I don't think that that money would belong to Disney because I think that Disney didn't set up any kind of licensing agreement in regards to actually right. distributing that money. Yeah, so Disney comes along and says, "What? Oh, we own the theme and we own the thing, so you can't, you wouldn't have been able to make a Star Wars video in the first place." Whoa, 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 whoa! He's got permission from Lucasfilm, and his permission is don't monetize it. And then Warner Chapel comes along, forces monetization, keeps the money. Lucasfilm then steps in after all of this blows up on the internet. Lucasfilm says, no, 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 he had permission. Get the claim off of there. So now it's back to being d voluntarily demonetized, if I understand correctly. Yeah, but I mean, you can't, like, take the advertisements back out of the viewer's eyeball. Right. Like, the service is already paid the for. The service was, so where was the provided. Money go? The money went to Warner Chapel. I, um, I don't know how often they get their money, but we get our money on the 21st of the next month. So they'll get their money on February 21st. I think that YouTube should set up a system where if something is unfairly claimed, that any of the advertising revenue needs to be refunded, like from the person who, who got it needs to yeah. be refunded and then given it to the original owner. Like, I think that that should be automatic when there has been a bad copyright claim. Yeah, there should. So let me tell you how this works in, in the law when and this is this is only this only applies to lawyers and the law. We have to hold client money in escrow or in trust. Same same kind of thing. Someone someone opens an account or maintains a bank account specifically for client funds or sometimes even specifically for one client's funds if there are enough funds. And we are in we are holding it in trust. We are trusted with the money and therefore we are the trustee and you giving us our money you giving us the money to hold for you you are the truster and that could certainly be set up it probably needs to be set up as part of law because youtube is really only going to obey the the law and they're going to obey it to the letter and 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 argue in court against anything that's not properly written or is equivocating or is vague so there probably has to be a law made that says when there is a claim for something that is currently making money and it's not a takedown claim, then any money that accumulates during the pendency of the claim needs to be held in escrow, not given to the claimant automatically. I'm not exactly sure where they get the idea that they're supposed to be giving the money to the claimant in the between anyway, but I don't know that there is a law. Instead, what would happen is, in today's regime, Star Wars, and this, let's, let's apply to this case, Star Wars theory would then have to privately sue, I mean, it's, it's, it's a public lawsuit, but they would have to sue in a private civil suit um, for that unjust enrichment, claiming that money. Now, do you think that if they do that, Lucasfilm is ever going to grant them the right to, to make more films? No, and that's the stupidity of the situation. That's what's so unbelievably terrible to me is that they can't practically vindicate their rights because then they'll simply be blacklisted informally, unofficially, and, and no one will ever work with them again because, look, they sue people who, who take, you know, $50,000 worth of revenue in this sort of softer situation. You know, don't work with them ever again.
because they they, they just don't deserve it because they sue people. So it's it's you know the, the the United States is so litigious and being litigious is so bad. Yeah, well, what happens when you actually need to vindicate your rights? That's what I don't like about the situation with Star Wars theory is that if they want to continue being a Star Wars fan fiction authorized whatever, they've got to play ball. How do not you feel mention, about that? Not to mention that Warner would spend so much in legal fees that it would completely drown out their ability to make a complaint anyway. Yeah. We'd basically have to crowdsource. If I was hired as the attorney to defend it, I would have to crowdsource other attorneys and, and legal theories and things because I'd be up against Disney money. And that's that's just an, that's a near impossibility. That's David and Goliath right there. I'm pretty accurate with my sling, but geez. There's a reason why David and Goliath was remarkable. It didn't happen often. Although I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, from what I understand, those slingers were actually pretty damn accurate and could take people out pretty quickly. And they practiced. I mean, if I understand, yeah. they were they were dead accurate. Like, hitting him in the head would have been something David would have known how to do in a real-life scenario. I don't know if that's a true story or just a, a fun piece of religious mythology, but the concept is true. I'm sure that there were arenas that pitted people against each other. I'm not disputing the fact that a story like that happened. I'm just saying, you know, how exactly David and Goliath really happened, if it really happened, would have been a little bit different than the book describes the good book so that is our show everyone thank you very much for joining me this of course is a community supported channel and i thank all of our supporters for their various forms of support uh we do accept subscribers on twitch and we do have a paypal where you can support but the primary means of supporting the channel is still patreon.com slash lj french in the month of January, I thank our $50 plus supporters, Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mintain, Michael Pierce, Terry Chris, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, and Sean McNamara. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters that are scrolling on the LED panel behind me, and I'll find room for you here on the crawl. Thank you very much for joining me, Brandon and Blackleaf and Tactical Bra, and I believe Miss Kaylee was here for a little bit. Thanks for all your input and your research and your management and your love and your kindness and all that. You guys are great. Uh, once again, I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I will see you in the videos that drop this week. We'll probably end up doing a live stream or something this week because uh, I'm sure that there's going to be something happening sometime soon here, as there always is. Every week, there's something in copyright law, which is what keeps us mm -hmm. going. So thank you for joining me. Love you all. I'll see you this week. Have a great week. Stay dry. Stay warm. Stay not stuck on the side of the road due to crashing from the snow and ice and all that. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye. It's very cold out here. And you are still excited about it. Very cold. Like this in my hood. <laughs>